wanted to be on the price is right. So it's like the price is right here right now. I will tell you the time is right. Would you agree the time is right for God to move in our lives? Right? Amen? And I thought that was just some amazing worship this morning. I will tell you this, if you're at a, if you want to go to a church and you go through worship to get to the message, you're at the wrong place. Because we worship God to get in His presence and then we're in His presence in Jesus. That's what it's all about. Well, I'm super excited and I am very, very pumped that we are starting this brand new three-week series that God put on my heart. It's called the Lifeway Church Growth Track. And you may be thinking, hey, what's that? what is that? I'm about to explain what that looks like, okay? And I believe at the end of this process that God is going to paint a very clear picture of where we were, where we are now, and where He wants to, to lead us, okay? But we believe that God is doing something very special in the Truth Picture area. He's growing and developing us as disciples to go do that. For three weeks, we'll show you how you how important you are to Lifeway Church and the Kingdom, regardless of your past, your race, your gender, or how you were raised, or what church you were raised in denominational background. Because if I said, what church were you probably raised in denominationally, three of you probably would raise four hands, because I had like four different churches that I grew up in as we moved down. Okay, but regardless of all that, all that God has called something very specific for this house, and, uh, and He's calling you to be a part of it. So we, de- we developed a way to help us to help you discover what your purpose is, how you fit into all God is doing at Lifeway Church. And going through the growth track is going to make it very crystal clear for you as you join us along with this journey. And we're actually taping this right now. This is going to be used uh, from this point forward. Uh, when someone comes to church and they want to sign up on one of our uh, ministry teams, they have to go through this membership class, okay, so they can be a part and know everything of what God's called us to do here at church. So the growth track is that membership class, and you'll learn all about core values, our beliefs, what God has shown us in Scripture. Then you have an opportunity to become a member of this house. And you may be thinking, well, Pastor, I've been coming here since you started, or maybe I've been coming for a couple of years. What do you mean I'm not a member? And all I'm saying is this. Yeah, that's awesome, and we, we celebrate what you've been a part of here, but God is growing us forward, okay, and as you've laid out a plan for us to follow. So here's the rundown of the next three weeks, okay? Today is week one, who we are. We're going to look at the history, the vision, core values and beliefs regarding our faith, and we're going to look at salvation and the Holy Spirit. Okay, week two is how God structured the church. How do we make decisions here at Lifeway Church, and then how God structured you, how God structured you. God said that He knit you together in your mother's womb. Uh, that means that He only made one you. And like Bobby said, if you don't take your seat at the table, that seat at the table is going to be empty. God will add more seats around it, but that specific seat is empty. So God needs you to know who you are as a Christian. The new you, the Bible says you become a new creation when you ask Jesus in your life. He wants you to know the new you because there's so many Christians that are saved, but they still are walking out their old life. Right? So we want to help you at Lifeway Church discover the new you. And then week three is where do I fit in? How can I use my gift to be a part of this church, this house, this team? Because God wants me, want me to join this team to go change the city. Now, the city, you're thinking, we don't, I don't live in a city. Well, the city represents Truth Fisher and all the surrounding towns. I call that. That makes up the city, our area of influence that God wants Life with Church to influence. But we have a little video that we put together. Many of you don't know the history of how it all started. So check this video out. Hey everyone, this is Pastor Terry, and I just want to take you on a little journey of how we ended up in our brand new building we have now. See, it all started right here in this living room. Back in 2000, a group of believers got together and we started doing life together. We call it a life group, a Bible study. And I led this group after a while, and I did such a great job, I shrunk it down to one person. Really, one person showed up. So after praying about it, we really felt God said, go ahead and shut it down. A week later, I'm at the middle school gym, and a man approaches me that I did not know. His name is Jeff Yost. He says, I heard you had a life group. And I said, well, we used to, but we don't, we don't have it anymore. I sh- we shut it down. And he said, would you open it back up? I remember thinking, man, at first I was a little confused because I know God said to shut it down. But I told Jeff this. I said, here's the deal. I'm going to pray about it. So I went home. I prayed about it. Tanya prayed about it. And we really felt God said, start it back up. I said, okay, God, I didn't understand, but we started it back up. And something took place because we went from one person to five people to 20 people to 30 people meeting right here in this living room. It was amazing. God was showing up. The joy of the Lord is filling this living room up. And I remember one guy showed up and he says, hey, um, my name's Cameron. Can I bring my guitar next week 
and, and play a song. And I, and I remember telling Cameron, who I didn't know at the time, I said, hey, Cameron, can you sing? Can you play the guitar? Are you any good? And he said, yeah, I can sing. Later, I found out that he had a scholarship in, in music. But when he started playing, it was amazing. God showed up in, just in a tremendous way. And, and we ended up having two life groups. We started off in here, one stayed down here, and one went up stop, top in the bonus room. We knew God was up to something special. We just didn't know yet what it was. So we fasted and we prayed. And over a period of time, God made it clear what was going to take place. See, one morning I woke up. And, and, and when, God, when I woke up that morning and I was having my quiet time, God said, you're going to start a church. And I had no idea how to do that. Didn't know what that meant. And he said, go talk to two guys. And they were out. I didn't know at the time, but I went to go talk to them. And they're right outside my porch that morning at 730 in the morning, sitting in their cars. And I went outside and I said, what are you guys doing? They go, we, we need to talk to you. And I said, what about? And they go, we believe we're supposed to help start a church. And I was blown away because that's exactly what God had just told me. So all three of us, we got together. We met with Life Church. We met with Gateway Church because they had some training for us too. And that's actually how we came up with the name Lifeway, a combination of Life Church and Gateway Church. So we started this church in a group of believers of 30 of us. We went all in with our time and our resources. Um, and we prayed about it, when to start this church, where it would be. That was a big priority. Where can we have church? We knew we couldn't have it in here forever. And uh, God gave us a location. We actually saw it online that some churches were actually starting out in a movie theater. So we went down and we met with 89er Theater here in town. And we met with them and they said, yeah, go ahead. You can rent this building. We'll let you use it. We were blown away by their generosity. But so we set a date. We believe God said, launch it on Easter. So a few months before that, we said, oh, hey, how are we going to let everybody know in this community and the surrounding towns that a new church was coming to Kingfisher? So as we looked around, we we're trying to find an, an idea to really stir up some momentum. I got a video and I was right over there in that room over there and I was watching this video from a lady that I met one time at a, at a conference. She said, Terry, um, I get an email from her. I said, Terry, I really felt God t told me to send you this video. I didn't know what that meant. I opened the video up and it was a helicopter dropping Easter eggs um, onto a, a big ground for a, a bunch of kids. And as I watched that video, I felt the Holy Spirit said, this is what you're gonna do. So I told the leadership team, I believe I have that idea that we've been praying about. And I told them about the helicopter and the Easter egg. And at first they thought I was nuts. But after we prayed about it, we all got excited. Hey, this is what we're gonna do. So we, man, we took all of our money and we rented a helicopter, okay? And bought a, thousands of Easter eggs. And then we rented the football field from the school system and we set a date to do this. And man, I'm telling you what, family showed up, 2,500 people showed up for this Easter egg drop, and you can just feel so much joy in the air. We had worship music going. Man, there were so many kids having a great time, and that really got us some traction and momentum that we were going to start a, a church up here in, in Kingfisher. So we opened up a new location, and it started right at 89er Theater. Let's go check it out. Well, here we are in the movie theater, our very first location, and 343 people showed up on that Easter morning. You know, we tried to have a little fun with it. We put signs up everywhere in people's yards that said, praise the Lord, pass a popcorn. And we literally, when they walked in, we handed them popcorn and we took them into worship and we praise the Lord. But this was a great location for us. And the movie theater was so generous to let us rent it from them. But let's walk in the movie theater here and let's show us, I wanna show you where the messages took place and all the worship took place, so follow me in here. Well, here we are inside of the movie theater where we actually did church. And if you notice right here, there's only about four feet, but we had a team of volunteers that would get up here at 5.30 in the morning and set a stage up inside big church here, sound system, projector, and get it all ready for our nine o'clock service. And then next door, we had a children's team that set up all the stuff, um, so dedicated, and what would take place as soon as church was over, we'd break it all down because there was a two o'clock matinee that was gonna come. So we had it all, had it all cleaned up and out of here for the two o'clock showing. So God did some amazing things. We saw marriages restored, people saved every single weekend. It was so fun to watch God move and change a community. Well, after about a year, okay, of setting up and tearing down, we started looking for a permanent location. But as you can imagine, in a small town, there weren't just tons of buildings that we could renovate into a church. Finally, one came on our radar. The problem was it was overpriced for what we could afford, but the price kept dropping and then God showed up and we got a building. The building came up right across the street. Let's go check it out. 
Well, here we are in our very first building. Man, what an exciting time for us as a church. Right now, what you see is a workout gym, but it used to not be that. When we got this building, there were other walls, so we started tearing down walls. We had a stage over here, the sound system back here, and we had about 215 chairs. And we ran three services in here to get this place uh, enough space so we could fill up. But man, God was moving in people's lives. And once again, it was, a, it was another step as we continue to grow and mature and reach this community with the love of Jesus. Now we had a small problem. The problem was this, we ran out of room for our kids. So the building next door actually came open and we went over, it was being auctioned. And here's a really cool story. When they found out, the other people that were gonna bid on it found out that the church was bidding on it, nobody bid except for us. They backed away, God showed up, so we got the building next door at a great price, had the space for our kids and for our youth, and we can continue to grow and, and move and change lives in our community. I'm so excited what happened here and what God did here at Lifeway Church in this building. But something started to change. God put it in our hearts. It's time to start looking for our next location, and I'm really excited to, to, to walk you over to where God has us right now and how that all came about. Let's go take a look. All right, everybody, so here I am, right here at our current location, and I'm so excited what God has already done here and what he's gonna continue to do. But let's take a walk through real quick before we hop up on top of the church because I wanna show you who God's called us to impact. Let's go. All right, everybody, here I am on top of the church building. I just wanted you to get a picture of who God has called us to influence. You know, when God said that you're gonna change a city, and when I first thought of Kingfisher, I'm thinking, well, Kingfisher is not a city, but God made it very clear that it wasn't just Kingfisher he's talking about. Our sphere of influence is all the surrounding towns that make up the city. So we're here right now, but before I talk too much, I just wanna tell you the, the history of how we got this land and how we actually moved into this building. When we first started uh, the vision of planting a church, God told us to start looking for some acreages. And he said, you need eight acres. So we started looking for eight acres of land. Kind of hard to find in Kingfisher. There's just not a lot of, unless you want to live out in the country. So we found eight acres right here by the ballpark, but it belonged to another person. We didn't know who it was, but we found out that another pastor owned it. So we actually went to his house we, and I said, hey pastor, I said, my name's Terry and we're actually thinking of building a church. And, God gave us a vision to build a church that seats a thousand people, but in order to do that, we need eight acres. And I said, you own eight acres. I said, I don't want to offend you, but are you planning on building a church there? And he looked at me and I'll never forget. He said, you know what? God gave me a vision about 10 years ago to, to plant a church on that land that was going to have a, a seat a thousand people. And he said to buy eight acres. And I looked at him, and I said, are you still going to do that? And he told me that at that moment, he said that, uh, he wasn't sure how it was gonna come about. He was getting older uh, in his age and he just wasn't sure. So when I began to speak to him, we both realized that that vision was the same vision, that God put that on his heart years ago. He put that on my heart right then. And together, God was making it very clear that we were actually talking about the same vision, that a church was gonna be planted right here, that lives were gonna be changed and people were gonna be healed and set free and come to know Jesus in a deep way. So that's how we got this land right here through another pastor God made it clear to both of us to plant this church. Okay, now here's how we got the building. Well, we knew we had the land, and as we started to look, we met with a couple builders out of Oklahoma City, and they said, to build a church that seats 1,000, you're gonna need eight acres. We said, okay, we know that. And they also said, you're gonna need 20% down. And 20% of four and a half million dollars is around $800,000. Well, we, at that time, had about $50,000 in the bank. And I remember talking to the leaders, we said, well, obviously let's table that, let's continue to put money away, and then we'll see what God shows us down the road. Well, about a year later, I was having my quiet time one morning, and uh, as I was reading, I came across two words in the Old Testament, and it said, it's time. So I kept on reading, I turned the page, and as I, was, as, as I continued to read, those two words kept coming to my mind, it's time. I finally stopped and I said, God, it's time for what? And he said, it's time to build a church. And I remember talking to God, I said, but God, you know we don't have near enough. I don't, we don't have enough. But I, God just kept telling me, will you trust me? Will you trust me? So I called the other elders and I said, I believe God told me this morning that it's time to look at building the church. 
And they know too that we don't have that much money, nearly as much, you had about $100,000 at that time saved. So we, we, we all prayed about it and we all agreed that God was telling me and them that it is time to move forward with this. So we met with another company out of Tulsa and I told them over the phone, I said, here's the deal. We're gonna build, we wanna build this church to seat a thousand people. And I said, but we only have about $100,000. We know you're gonna tell us we need about 800,000. And they said, it's okay, we'll still meet with you. And they met with us the following week. And after we talked with them and we heard their heart behind how to build a church and their heart and our heart was, heart was lining up, they, they left and um, we all prayed about it. The elders, we all prayed and we weren't sure how God was gonna provide, but we knew we were following it within his will. So the next morning I woke up and I get a phone call and it was a person that goes to our church and they said, hey, can you come by my office? And I said, okay, I didn't know if he wanted me to pray with him or what was going on in his life. And as I went there, he said, God told me to hand you this check. And he handed me a very large check. As I'm driving home, my phone rings again. And a guy says, can you come by my house? So we went by his house. And uh, he said, um, God told me to give this, church to this check to the church. And it was another very large check. And I'm not making this up. My phone rings a third time within the end of that day. And another guy says, come by my, my office. So I go by his office. By now I'm starting to laugh because I knew God was up to something very special. And he hands me a check, a very large check. And in a 24 hour period, um, God had given us $1.5 million, double the amount of what we needed to build this church. Now I'm not saying that's how God works for everybody, but that's exactly what he did for us. And then from there, we did a big building campaign called I Love Our City. And uh, what we did is we raised about another million dollars through everybody's above and beyond their tithe. We call that an offering. And they gave above and beyond. They didn't give to the building, they gave to a vision that one day that we would be able to reach all the people that live in our city, okay, that they would come to know Jesus through Lifeway Church, that we would make God's name famous, that it wouldn't be about a building, but it'd always be about Him, okay, because that's what this is all about. Seeing lives change, lives restored, people saved, people set free from anger and, and other issues they may have, that's the type of God we serve. So I wanna, I wanna encourage you to join us along this journey. There's so many more people that are moving to town, so many more people that are already here that need to know Jesus. So we're praying that you would join this team in a special way to help reach those that need to know Jesus. Whoever finds God, finds life. Well, I gotta give a shout out to Ryan and Gene, two of my brothers that helped make that uh, possible. It took a lot of hours to put that together. And um, I just hope that you, if you're new here, you have an understanding, oh, that's how that took place. I just wanna paint a clear picture of where we were and how good and faithful God was back then, right? I'm praying, I was seriously, I was in my closet one time praying, God, God, show us where we can rent a building. And um, and in that process, God showed me you're going to build a church of 2,000. I was looking for a rental building, and God showed me what we were going to build, a thousand. You need to look around now, and there's an empty seat. How many you know that, that when God asks you to do something, you don't look at what's in front of you, but you out of faith, you trust that God's going to fill these seats with people. You know, one time I was, uh, I was in the back. I stood up there and I said, God, I said, I said, you said build a church of a thousand people. And I said, this place isn't full yet. And he said, but I'm here. Would you rather go to a church that's completely full where God's not there? Or you'd rather go to a church where there's an empty seat for new people God's going to call into this house where the Holy Spirit is present and He's there. Amen? All right. We're running. We're running. Late. This one's going to be late, Del Toro. That's all right. You may say it's been 10,000 times. You're going to make it. Okay. Because it's, it's, i got a good word to share with you, and I want you to get this because God has given the elders some changes for Lifeway Church. Very awesome. Good changes, right? Okay, I want to take a look at the vision, okay? God called us, the elders, probably about uh, six or eight months ago that he was making a change to the vision of Lifeway Church. So he said, God, what does that look like? So we actually got together, went out to another location, um, to a friend's, uh, had a little cabin, and we did a lock-in. You ever did a lock-in in middle school? They, they say lock-in. Well, we did a lock-in. We weren't leaving, so God showed us what that vision was. So after a, a few hours, God started to paint a clear picture with some very specific words what that vision statement is. So I'm going to read that, and then I'm going to break it down for us. Here's what he gave us. To grow a family of empowered believers who experience God's presence 
and proclaim His kingdom. Okay? So I'm going to break this up into three parts. The first part is empowered believers. You see, Jesus told His disciples, who were already Christians, right? He goes, wait, I'm about to send somebody to you that's going to empower you so that you can do what I'm going to ask you to do. Right? So here's Jesus. Here's what He says. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. See, it's clear that God never intended for us just to be saved Christians. Good Christians. I mean, when we get to heaven, God's going to say, how good was this? He's going to say, how many people did you invite to the table so I could save your life? And you're thinking, well, Pastor, I'm not, I've got some things in my life, or I'm not strong enough. Good, good news. The Holy Spirit is. And He can do what you're incapable of doing. In fact, you try to do it on your own, and, and you'll, get, you'll get knocked on the head. Okay? This world isn't real nice. You've got to be an empowered believer to do what God's calling you to do. So we believe uh, empowered is key. Empowered means filled with the Holy Spirit. Other key words in that vision are experience God's presence. That means when you come to church, guys, we want you to experience the presence of God in worship, in the message, and in fellowshipping with other Christians. We want you to meet every Sunday with God when you come to Lifeway Church. And I don't always remember that growing up. When I went to church, it's because my mom and dad drug me to church. Often, like, you ever try to fake it that you're sick when you're little? I tried to fake it many times, and mom drug me to church. I did go to church expecting to have an encounter with the living God. And that's what I want for us as a church. Whether you're a big person or a little person, it's the same thing in, in little church, okay, is that we come expecting to have an encounter with God. Because we know that when you have an encounter with God, He'll change your life. Name one spot in the Bible when someone had an encounter with Jesus that their life wasn't completely changed. So we know that if you can have an encounter with the presence of God, with the person of the Holy Spirit, when you leave the building, you'll be different every time. Now, you're not going to get Abraham or Moses or Elijah on day one. It's a process. It's a process. I, I say we have a lot of farmers here. I said it last week. God is in the business of pulling weeds out of your life and planting seeds. He pulls seeds, he plants seeds, those seeds start to grow. And you start to walk out and live out the life God called you to live. I will say this too, that I know there's many that have been with us a long time. And I know how you were when you came here. And God has done a, a, a change in you. And you're not the same person you once were. Right? Not the same person. Those people that get offended at church, someone didn't say hi to them or they didn't like something, they unplugged from the church. Unplugged from the church because God is such a place and you can plug Jesus with his bride and the bride of Christ in the church. When they unplug from the local church, they miss so much in their life. I believe that. Why Satan kicks us off and gets us offended in church. Well, I, church is a family to me. You ever been offended by one of your family members? You don't get to kick them out of the family because they're family, right? You have to forgive them and love them even if they're, they can be jerks. Well, sometimes as Christians, even in here, sometimes someone may not say hi to you. Well, let it go. God's above the offense, right? So I believe we're one big family here. And uh, uh, I would believe that we want everybody to experience God's presence because that's the main thing. The third part of that vision is proclaiming His kingdom. Now, but here, the disciples asked Jesus, Jesus, how do we pray? How do we pray? How should we pray? Here's Jesus. He turns to them and says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. See, we know in heaven there's no sickness, right? There's no mental or physical illness. Okay, there's only health and wholeness and unity and freedom. And Jesus told his disciples right there, which were disciples, if you're a follower of Jesus, you're a disciple. Okay? He basically tells them, pray that the kingdom would go from heaven back down to earth. That heaven would actually show up while you're on earth. Okay? Well, actually on earth. And I believe that kingdom values are what God wants us to live out in our life. Kingdom values. Okay? It's what He wants us to pray for. It's what He told the disciples to pray for. I believe it's also what Jesus paid on the table. He paid a big price for us to be able to be who He called us to be. We also see in Scripture, when the Jesus uh, was talking to the disciples, the disciples said, Jesus, why do you see so many things, so many great miracles? Help us understand what you took place. Check it out. Here's Jesus. Here's His response. 
I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will do the same work I have done, and even greater work, because I am going to be with the Father. If you believe in Jesus, raise your hand if you believe in Jesus. Alright. Here we go. Put your hands raised. Alright. Are you taking your time? Alright. All right. If you believe in Jesus, that means that He can do miracles through your hands. You say, that's kind of odd. I never see Just because you haven't seen it doesn't make it odd. Alright. It's the reality of it as Christians. God wants us to be the norm in our lives. It becomes so normal in our lives. And I pray for somebody. My son Cody would be at the mall, and I turned my head, and he set his hand on some lady's shoulder, praying that God would heal her shoulder. He just walked up to the lady and goes, hey, I noticed you're, you're squeezing your shoulder. Is it okay? And she just said, or something like, yeah, my, my shoulder has been really hurting. It's been hurting for a long time. And Cody goes, can I pray for you? And he will, and she says yes. Now, she says no, Cody. <laughs> Cody wasn't doing it. My son Cody is a big faith believer, believing that God can use him to release the kingdom in their life. Okay? So that's our vision statement, to grow a family of empowered believers who experience God's presence and proclaim His kingdom. Isn't that good stuff? That's what God showed us. Okay? Once again, He doesn't just want us saved. He's saving us to do a purpose. You know, saved for a purpose. See, we don't want a Christian to be the same Christian a month from now as you are right now. Do you want to be the same? We want you to be changed every time you come because you have an encounter with God and He's growing you to be becoming more like Him. Now, in the process, too, over the last few months, God has shown us three simple steps that He wants us to implement at Lifeway Church. And we've got them on some boards. We put them out there in the hallway. You're going to notice them now that I'm going to bring them to your attention. Very simple. It says, to know God, find friends, and discover purpose. Know God, find friends, discover purpose. All right? And I'm going to break those down real quick for us. Okay? I can say that I know the president, but do I really know the president? Right? Do I know the president like a close friend would know him, or do I just know the president based off what someone else has said about him? How many Christians, right? I believe there's many Christians that say they know the Father, they know Jesus based off of Pastor Gary's experience. But we want you to know whether you're a pastor, a leader, a volunteer, been saved a month, been saved 10 years, that we want you to know that God wants you to have that close, intimate walk with Him. Amen? Right? Okay, so check it out. This is in Ephesians. It's, um, it says, uh, Ephesians chapter 1, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know Him better. We want to help you know God. Perfect. Okay? The second thing is to find friends. So know God, find friends. You see, we were created for relationships. Think about the disciples. They did life together, right? Peter and all those guys, man, they did life together. God knew that they would need each other to do what He called them to do. In fact, at one point, Jesus sent them out in pairs because He knew that they were going to face some opposition when they went out to share the gospel. Okay, so He put them in pairs. So God designed us for relationships. Okay, and the third part of that is discover purpose. God says without a vision, the people perish. So we want you to have a vision for your life. So know God, find friends, discover purpose. And I want this to become a common phrase here at Lifeway Church. It makes it super easy when you invite someone to church. You say, hey, man, once you come to life today, I want you to think about I want to go to church. Very simple. Now you say to, to know God, find friends, and discover purpose. Because all of us are wired to have a to, to, to desire to really know God. The devil's real good. He throws a counterfeit out there, and he'll get people distracted thinking God is in something else. Right? But we're all wired to know Him. We're all wired for relationships. We put life with other Christians. And then we all need a purpose for our life. And we don't need a prayer. We need a vision and a purpose for our life. Okay? Here are some core values that now switching gears, we're going to talk about some core values here at Lifeway Church. Okay, we believe that the, the local church is the hope of the world. That we're not going to put the hope of the world in our government. We're not going to put the hope of the world in our school agency, right? Our school system, right? Or anything else. Okay, that those are great things. That is not the hope of the world. The local church is the hope of the world. That God's equipping us as His saints, right? And then He's launching us out to change the world. Okay? God says in the Bible that the church is His body. It is made full and complete by Christ. He fills all things everywhere with Himself. See, God has entrusted us with you, and we don't take that lightly. You being here makes the local church stronger and the health of our city stronger. Then we believe, too, one of our core values is it is 
more blessed to give than to receive. Right? More blessed to give. God says to bring the tithe, the tenth, into the local storehouse, which is the local church that you attend. Okay? The tenth is a tenth of our income, the tithe. And actually, guys, think about this. Since everything that you have belongs to God, you're not actually giving God, you're just returning what's already here. Right? You're returning what's already here. And here's the cool thing. God allows you to keep 90% of what's here. And he asks you to manage it well, and just steward. And he says he's going to redeem the 90%. Redeem means protect. Now, if you can have 100% of everything you have right here and hold on to it, unprotected, right? That means the enemy has free legal right to take finances away, right? To take away your finances. Or you can have 90% fully protected by God. Okay, so we believe in the tithe. We also believe that it's not all about us. I believe God calls us to bring others into the kingdom. And one of those ways is to invite people to church. And here's what I promise you at the end of each service. At the end of each service, God, God will ask everyone to bow their heads and close their eyes. And I'm going to give people an opportunity to ask Jesus into their heart. And when you bring a friend, I'm actually I'm going to give you permission right now when you bring somebody, that when I say that, you keep one eye open. I want you to keep one eye open because I want you to see what God's going to do in your friend's life. I want you to be a witness. I want you to celebrate. And I want you to be reminded how good and faithful the Father is. And when you bring somebody to church, that you actually get to see it. So if I see you looking out with one eye, I know that you invited somebody. I'm going to fix with you later. That's awesome. All right? We also believe in the, in the power of small groups. There's many of that in small groups right now. Okay? Think about this. Was Jesus in a small group? There he was. You have his disciples, right? And then of the disciples, he had his close friends that are close friends, and he shared a lot of intimate stuff with. Okay? So I want to encourage you to stop by the table in the lobby and look at the options, because we have some small groups in the lobby. Look at one of the options and do life with other Christians. You say, I have a lot of friends. Do you have Christian friends with the same values that you have? Okay? I'm not saying don't have friends. Have friends, but do life. The main part of your life is with other believers with the same heart you are, have to serve Jesus and spread the gospel. So I'm going to shift gears. I want to cover some key scriptures. So I believe that the entire Bible is the inspired Word of God and that it is without error. Right? It's without error. It's the final authority of our faith. It's how we live our lives. It's how we make decisions. People say, Pastor, what do you think about this? I can give them my opinion. Or I can say, hold on a second. Let's open up the Bible. What does God say about homosexuality? What does God say about being drunk or, or anything, any questions that pop up, what does God say? Because His Word is how I live my life. It's not my opinion. Okay? Too many times Christians often, guys, they give their opinion as if it's biblical and they base their decision off what they see. Right? So I want to always go to the Word here so God says, and, that, and from that childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for all, for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So God wants to equip you and complete you so that as you're reading the Word, He's strengthening you to go out and do what He's called you to do. Sunday mornings is amazing, but it's not the matter. Right? It's, the Word is the bread. Imagine not eating anything all week long, really. You're only eating Sunday morning when you come to to eat, right? You're going to starve to death. God's going to ask you to do something on Tuesday, and you're going, God, I'm famous. I have no time. The Word will strengthen you. It will renew your mind. It will equip you to do good works. Amen? All right, that's important. The Word is so important. We also believe in the Trinity. We believe in one God externally existing in three distinct persons, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. We believe in Jesus Christ that who is God's only begotten Son, who became flesh to reveal God to man and to become Savior of the lost world. And we believe in salvation, that the blood of Jesus Christ shed on the cross provides the sole basis for the forgiveness of our sins. And therefore, salvation only occurs right, when a person places his or her faith in the death and resurrection of Christ. We also believe that mankind was created in the image of God. Take a look at Genesis chapter 1. So God created human beings in His own image. In the image of God, He created them, male and female. He created them. So He created us to have fellowship with Him, but through Adam's sin, we inherited a sinful nature. 
right? He inherited sinful nature. He became alienated from that relationship. So as a result, man is completely incapable, right, of regaining a right relationship, okay, with God through our own efforts. That means this, guys, that you can never be good enough to earn your way into heaven. You can never feed enough poor people to earn your way into heaven, right? If you could work, your, that's called work. If you could work your way into heaven, then we serve a mean father. Because only a mean father would have his, have his son die on the cross. If you can earn your way into heaven, a lot of Christians think they can earn their way into heaven. But the Bible says, it's only through my son can you come through me. But we believe in Jesus Christ paid the complete price for us. Now, listen, because I love the Father and I love Jesus, I'm going to walk out my life the best that I can. Sometimes I mess up. I repent and I get going back in the right direction. I don't have to earn anything from the Father. I just go to the Father because He loves me. He paid everything the price on the cross. We believe in the present ministry, listen, the present ministry of the Holy Spirit. That it indwells Christians and enables them to live godly lives. We further believe that biblical examples of the Holy Spirit's power and gifts are available to believers today. Here's the Bible in John chapter 14. And I will ask the Father, and He will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive Him because it isn't looking for Him and doesn't recognize Him. But you will know Him because He lives with you now and later will be in you. See, God doesn't just want us to know about Him. God wants us to walk closely with Him. And we pray that everyone develop a personal close walk with God and go to life for church. We want everybody to be focused and clear. God doesn't want His kids walking around in a fog. The enemy wants to fog things up in our lives. God wants clarity. And He wants clarity. See, God has a plan for you, a purpose written on your life. He wants you to see it clearly. You know that 87 of the percent of the people do not know their purpose in life? 87 percent of people. But we want to change that at Lifeway Church. And we believe after you complete the growth track, your purpose will be much clearer. You see, when you leave today, the ushers are going to hand you a check. Here's the I thought my teaching days were over, but I guess I'll pass out another check. All right? And it takes like five minutes. There's two checks. There's one on the front and one on the back of the seat. One's going to talk about your spiritual gifting, and this is an accurate test. The back's going to talk about your unique personality. And it probably takes you five minutes to take those tests, because next week I'm going to teach on one, one of the elders is going to teach on the other one, and we believe God is going to bring laser focus to who, who He uniquely created you to be. Isn't that good? Don't you want to know God's new wives? Sometimes I do. God has wired you for a purpose, and we want to help you to develop that in you. Okay? All right. So I'm super pumped for the direction God's taking Lifeway Church. If you would stand, we're going to pray. Worship team, go ahead and stay. We're going to stand, and I'm going to pray us out. Please close your eyes. No deacon unless you brought somebody. Father, we just thank you so much for your presence today. We love you so much that you showed up on the cross, died for our sins, so we could be forgiven and have a right relationship with you. We thank you for the new vision you've given Lifeway Church. Father, I just pray for a fresh anointing over every single person, that, Lord, they would leave inspired and encouraged because they had an encounter with you today. And they would come next Sunday fully expecting to be changed more like you. And they would be an advocate for you, Father, Lord, not just being a saved Christian, but being a disciple for you, showing others all about you. Father, I just pray right now, if there's someone here that doesn't know you, that never had an encounter with you, that never surrendered their life to you, that right now this would be the best day of their life, that you'll... Father, I pray that you pour up their hearts right now. And if you're here today and you don't know Jesus, and you've never done that, you've never surrendered your life to Christ, don't wait another day. Do it right now. Just put your hand up and say, yes, today I want to give my life to Jesus. Anyone today? Just put your hand up and say, yes, today I give my life to Jesus. Father, we just thank you so much for who you are. I thank you for this church. I thank you for all the people that you call the people of the church, Lord, and quick us. Father, God has to put you first in our lives. We will accept no counterfeit. We will not accept things of this world to take your place. You are number one in our life. And we put you first in our life. And everything we do. Amen. All right, guys. So excited for next week. Bring somebody to back with you. Make sure when you leave that you grab, okay, those sheets. Remember, whoever finds God, we'll see you guys.